What's going on, Hits fam? It's your girl, Kimmy B, representing Afternoon and the Afternoon Crew, 2 to 7 p.m. on the new Hits 97.3, hanging out with a legend, legend, the one and only Walshy Fire. Welcome to the new Hits 97.3, boo. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be on your couch. So, <laughs> Paul. Yeah, in your... I'm glad, that this is, I'm glad that this isn't just an audio interview because yeah. that could go yeah, 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 very, yeah. very left. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So for anyone that is going to listen to it on a radio, I'm not on her couch. This is a studio yeah. with a couch in it and other people are in the room. Although yeah. I spent enough time here that this could technically yeah, be yeah, yeah. my couch. You understand that being yeah, in the music business. Now, sure. when I call you a legend, well, she, I mean, first of all, I have some, some Caribbean and especially some Jamaican friends that mm -hmm. would be very jealous right now of the fact that I am sitting across Man, shout out from to them. you. Yeah. Um, and that's because you've been doing this for a minute, but I didn't realize like you are Miami through and through, bro. Carol full City. time, full time. Yeah, full time. Carroll City grew up in Carroll City, never left Carroll City. Um, you know, went to three high schools in Miami, Carroll City, New Orleans, and then graduated from North Miami Beach. Skirt. So, yeah. I'm, Why did you go to three high schools? Well, this is the honest <laughs> truth. If you want to keep, I'm going to keep it short. I don't know how real 97.3 keeps it, man. All the but way. If it's all the way, you know, if it's Kimmy, if it's Kimmy B all the way. Yes. Then, um, yeah, so Carroll City was, my mom is Jamaican, of okay, course. Yeah. And Carroll City was an all black American school. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, no. You ain't doing that. Then we went to Norland, and Norland was an all Jamaican school. Okay. And so my mom was like, no, you oh. ain't doing that. Now, mind <laughs> you now, I appreciate it now, mm -hmm. but NMB at the time was a diverse school. Got you. So there was a lot of uh, Jewish people, a lot of Chinese people, um, and uh, a lot of Spanish people. And I, I now appreciate that broader look on life yeah. than the very small box look on life, which was I would have been in my same circle mm -hmm. already. So yeah. she pulled me out of that circle and dropped me in a different pool of fish. Well, I love that mom had the foresight yeah. to understand right. the benefit of being around Correct. all different. And, and that's the beauty of living in Miami. That's the beauty of Miami. So I got a great like representation of Miami yeah. going to N and B and you know, now I know so much about so many different cultures. Mm -hmm. Like I know everything. There's not a single <laughs> Island. I don't know something about yep. or a part of South or Central America that I don't know something about. And that's because of N and B. I love it. You know, it's funny. One of my best friends, I went to the university of Miami and she is Jamaican and white. She grew up in upstate New York, but her father mm -hmm. is Jamaican. He's from mm -hmm. St. Mary mm -hmm. and country. He cut for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and he kind of had the same, thought when when she was going to the university of Miami, he's like understand something you're jamaican he's yeah. like that's a different world being caribbean is something very different there's a different mm -hmm. work ethic there's a different mentality there's a different outlook on life mm -hmm. and i didn't know that until i was really like hanging out with her a lot and, and she would take me to jamaica and i'd be around her family and even hanging around the jamaican community yeah, here, here and just you really start to see the difference in how people move and, yeah, and it's a grind are. life, man. Where are you from originally? Like, where's my family? Like, I grew up in Boston. You grew up in Boston. Yeah. No accent. Did you purposely lose it or you <laughs> never had it? I've been here a long time. Yeah. But if I'm talking to family, like, pack the car. Yeah, so my, my photographer is from Boston, and he purposely lost it because of the harassment he was getting. <laughs> and I totally get it, right? So I used to be around him, but I never... I, and I would laugh at people harassing him, but I never thought of how much that eventually annoys you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, one, no girl would take him seriously. Oh. Right? And I totally get that. If I was a person looking for someone to date i would never want to hear that accent for life <laughs> that would that would be the last accent i would want to hear for life shade is so so, real but it's Bostonian. so real it's so real right it's the it's what i consider the ugliest accent in america so if you're if you're listening to that and you're like man do i want to hear somebody say car park every day <laughs> no second thing is people would kind of uh as we would say they would monkey him because they would constantly be like, yo, say this, say that, say this. And so I didn't think of how annoying that gets until I saw him just being like, yo, I got to lose his accent. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I say Boston, they immediately say, all right, where's the car park? Yep. And he's like, uh, here we go. All right, so the yep. car parks, down mm -hmm. that. And you're like, yo, that's your life, bro. <laughs> just because you're from one place in America, your life is constantly having people be like, yo, sing and dance for me. Mm -hmm. And so he purposely lost the accent, got him a girlfriend. <laughs> And uh, and no longer has the harassment of people being like, say this, say that. This had to have been before Seth MacFarlane. 
because he has changed the yeah, game for Seth the Boston. Yeah, is Ted, that dude. He, and that that yeah. Dan Bear, because uh, things are very different now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's gotten a little better for the Bostonians yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shout out to Boston. But yeah, that's he's the truest Boston dude, man. He talked, the, he had the worst accent and then gone like that. But you know what's funny to me about especially Jamaicans? I've never seen another group of individuals be able to turn on and turn off their accent yeah. the way Jamaicans can. Yeah, you know what it is, though? It's already English, right? Uh -huh. So it's easy. Um, for the most part, you already are learning um, in an English system. Mm -hmm. You're not learning like... It's in, British English, it's though. In a British it's English, like fancy right. English. But we're next to America. Uh -huh. So you're learning proper English, as we would say. Mm -hmm. um, and so everyone in Jamaica usually, as long as they've got some level of education, has a standard English yeah. that they can switch on. But then that patois comes out, and it's something yeah, very it's different. Different thing. The more, the more rum... That's in you, <laughs> the more angry you get. Yeah, I was about to say the more, more aggression. Turn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Because I have friends and I'm like, where did that, why, where did that even come from? Yeah. You were just talking about Certain like words me. also just sound better in Patois. Yeah, like you Wagwan. Know? Yeah, like what's going on is cool, but Wagwan is awesome. It's the best. You know? Um, especially when you're speaking to a female, I think that mm -hmm. that's when the language gets really sweet and it's extremely, extremely exaggerated in the kindness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like we're saying weird things like calling you all kind of fruit and all kind of weird stuff. <laughs> Give me an example. No, it's like, you know, like chillups, like stuff like that. Like, I don't know if a woman wants to be called chillups or something or, or putus. It's just cute words to uh -huh. call a female when they're passing by. But what do they mean? Nothing really. It's just, <laughs> you know what it is? It's sonics, right? Uh-huh. So we're in the sonics market. And so we know that certain words, like for instance, you have a radio voice, mm -hmm. right? And that might've been something that you eventually learned to get. Um, I got my master's in journalism. So I went I into radio after that because I learned to eventually do the radio voice. Now we're in an era where the radio voice isn't as, as no one, Necessary. it doesn't as matter as yeah, much. Sure. But if you've been doing this as long as I have, you remember when the radio announcer was like, Yeah, this is going to be 97.3 FM is going to be the <laughs> where the hits are. You did that really well. Right. But that's what it was when yeah. I was going to school. Was I had a teacher who was like, You do radio. This is how you talk. Mm -hmm. You know, you're on hit 97.3. <laughs> and now that's still part of it, but not as much. Yeah. Right. So, like, you could find people that still talk like that. You can find people that talk something like that, or you could actually not talk like that at all on yeah. radio anymore. So you have a radio voice. Your voice goes up and down like this. Is you're excited. You're you're, you're as, in we, it. as we say, you're <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Your dag your your daggers are are sharp. You know what I'm saying. So you your people look up when you start to talk, mm -hmm. right? Because your presentation is grabbing. While a lot of uh, a lot of uh, the Jamaican um, patois is very similar, mm -hmm. and so when someone is passing by and you want to get their attention, uh, Sonics is the way to do it, you know, because we won't, like, we're not going to, like, grab you or nothing like that. But Sonics are the way to do it. And so words like, hey, chulups, pretty chulups, it's kind of, like, weird sounding, not that I'm saying it in this way, but when a woman is passing by, the Sonics of it, I think, hit her ear mm -hmm. to where she'll at least look up and acknowledge that you said something cute. Yeah. You know, and putos is another one that's a very cute sounding uh, way to refer to a person. Women will also call a man putus if they really? want to be cute. Yeah, gotcha. and stuff like that. So chulups, putus. I love it. Like I'm, I'm learning a whole new language. Yeah. This is, this it's like baby, it's it's like baby talk. It's like baby talk. You know, gotcha. it's, like, it's like gibberish in yeah, a way. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. But, but then cute. There's some, then there's some other words where it's like, you know, there's absolutely. And then the, the teeth sucking thing. Well, I like noticed that everyone does that, though. So I don't know how we've become, like, the owner of it. Well, but the owner of it in a negative way. Like, that's in a negative like way. Where yeah. your mother or father will slap yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's extremely disrespectful. Yeah, like, it's extremely disrespectful. But, yeah, I haven't met anyone from any uh, third world country that doesn't do it. No, you know? everybody, it's yeah, everybody how, like, does it. Yeah. But it's, I've never seen the reaction. But it's extremely, be, yeah. extremely offensive in Jamaica. You know where yeah. it came from? Oh, man, good question. I don't know. I'm going to say Africa because that's where everything comes from, you right? Know, Just got to go back to the, yeah, got to be from. So I'm so glad that you said that because I want to really transition. Now, obviously, if you don't know, while she's one-third of the phenomenal, or I should say the phenom 
group, Major Laser. Thank you. Um, it's been a while since Diplo's been here. We usually get to catch up with Jillionaire every year during, you know, mm -hmm. what used to be Winter Music Conference, what right. is now Miami Music uh, yeah. Ultra Music Festival. Uh, he always slides through. He's such a great vibe. Um, unfortunately, you have never come by. Which is crazy, by well, the way, <laughs> because I'm the one that lives here. Thank you. That's, yeah, was, so I'm that's gonna, actually I'm, crazy. I'm going to let you say when, that. When Lieberman hit me up about this, I was like, that's so weird. This is going to be my first time doing local radio interviews what is, what? and i'm the and by the way i'm the radio interview guy so no one else does more than me i do new york la chicago i do the you world show? i'm just saying yeah well, it's kind of crazy you know so I mean? yeah i'm 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 offended but at the same time <laughs> i'm blessed to be here well, it almost seems Give like thanks. you know you're you're so low-key that you're like yeah, yeah it's one of those things i don't really uh promote where i'm at or well that i'm I'm in Miami as much as I probably should or could. And that's, I think I have like a little wall of security up. You know how gotcha. like they say this like. This home. It's right, different. Right. It's different. You know You're what I'm saying? Well, and so fired. I don't know if you like, if you watch a lot of things that happen in the world, but uh, when you watch like, for instance, any rapper that dies, usually they get killed in their own city. Mm -hmm. Right. Nipsey. And it's usually like, it's usually like some kind yeah. of like, yo, for real. It's usually like some kind of local hatred that yeah. they didn't see coming crabs in a barrel right and so i'm really from here mm -hmm. and so and I, I don't wear any jewelry i don't i don't do anything like that but i still feel like i should put a wall up and secure myself and my family and everybody mm -hmm. from um people feeling too comfortable got in you. their Having approach too easy access i got you right i really do feel like people love you here though like no you i get the love Chief, i get the love the i get the love on a real level here especially tuesdays with my event yes. at Koyo taco rum and base so i'm extremely approachable but at the same time i do want to at least be aware that i'm not watching rare things happen like nipsey's situation is not as rare yeah. as we think yeah a lot of people have been lurking like oh wow he's Mr. successful Blacks. and i know him and I know where he lives. I know his route. Yeah. Right? And so even if I don't have a dollar on me, they don't know that. Yeah. And so I try to make sure my routes are not the same. Gotcha. And you know what I'm saying? I just want to, you know, I just want to think ahead because great people have been, have, have been uh, lost. Yeah. You just, you get caught off guard. And like you said, there's a comfortability of being home. And when this is where you're from, you know, but again, it, it's... Yeah. Astute of you to be aware. Right. So. That's a that's that's exactly what I'm saying. But Correct. you can still find Wall Street at Coyote yeah, Taco. I'm out here. On Tuesday night. <laughs> I'm out here. Like honestly, call me, DM me. I'm a <laughs> I'm a reply. We'll meet up. It's whatever. So let me ask you a question though. Did Rum and Bass start at Coyo Taco, or did it exist before that? No, it started at Coyo Taco. And it has now become a global. Yeah, it's become a global party. thing. We just did Paris. Um, I'm doing I need Toronto. An to that. I was, Paris I was, was stalking crazy. you on your Instagram because I do that sometimes. Yeah. And I was like, really? Rum and Bass is now in Paris in the summer? Yeah. WTF. Nah, no joke. I got tons of that. And I apologize to everyone. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be as major as it was. I will make this a trip next time. I will be like, yo, here's the flights. Yo, here's yes. some hotels. Yo, Miami come through and represent because it was one of those nights where you're just like, this is too amazing. So I have Toronto next, mm -hmm. September the yep. 8th. LA in November, and then Art Basel, we do a big block party. Yeah, here, in, here, in Miami, in, obviously. Uh, in Linwood, yeah. And again, this party happens two, Tuesday nights, whether you're in town or not, because obviously not. you guys have the most, I'm, I talked about this with Diplo when he was here, I love to watch DJs' Instagrams because it's like, if you have that wanderlust thing, if you love travel, don't nobody travel more than, you know, that, that A-tier DJ squad. And there are times when I look and it's like, literally somebody will be in like Phuket, and the next day in Vegas, and the next day somewhere in Germany doing a festival, and then you're in South America, and I'm like, bro. And to be honest with you, nobody does it more than me and me and Wes. Like mm -hmm. nobody does it. Like I watch every other DJ, and I see that they they move a lot, but nobody moves more than me and Diplo. And if you ask if you ask Diplo, he'll say I move more than him. I probably do 300 shows a year. And that's real talk. I probably do about 300 shows a year. And he does maybe 250 a year. That's insane. Yeah. So I go I go harder than probably any any DJ you could think of. Do you have a favorite city to perform in? Um, you mean like in America or in the world? Give me an American city that you love to perform in and then give me a global city. Um, okay, so I think New Orleans <gasps> is probably great the greatest city. city in America. Um, I love that you said that. Yeah, and of course, no offense to my hometown, right? But there's something, there's a special, 
there's a special thing. It's a special cultural spark. Food, people, mm -hmm. language, yeah. uh, fashion, you know, uh, texture of the place. It's unique in every aspect that you could think of. It checks all the boxes. No, and it really is, I say, if there's a place where we should have major events, like yeah. Super Bowls, things like that, yeah. New Orleans, and Miami. I, yeah, I yeah. do always Miami give home always team Miami. credit, but New Orleans just has, like you said, an energy and a vibe, and I've never met a nicer group of, of people, people especially people that work up. in the service industry straight up like they are just they it's, like like it's like mom and pop it's everything it's like mom and pop everything it's crazy and you know and it's an extremely dirty city mm -hmm. it's a very filthy city it's got corners that you hit that corner it stinks so bad and you gotta love it you're like yo this is what it is we're in a swamp in the south yeah where water is getting, you know, is it, where we got a dam stopping water. Like, this is what it is. And that has added to the flavor, to the gumbo <laughs> of what <laughs> New Orleans is. So that, and then worldwide, I would say, uh, I would say Nairobi, Kenya. Ooh. Yeah. You keep taking it back to Africa. Always. And that was actually the, the name of the last project that you guys were doing. Well, hey, this is the album cover. This is. And this was oh. an accident. I promise you I didn't mean to do this, but I do like to wear my own merch. Go, <laughs> go get that merch at well, maddecent.com. But yeah, for everyone out there listening, maddecent.com. See, if I had had some of your merch, I'm a merch. I call myself a merch. Uh, like, yeah. I'm that person that buys yeah, I love, stuff. Yeah, I love artists that come out with good merch. Like, Travis Scott really nailed it. Um, Kanye usually does a good job. And yeah, I'm with you. I love good merch. So yeah, this is the album cover. Um, and this is what it is. A bang is the yep. name of it. And it's a horn. It's a bullhorn. You had a friend. Yeah, I had that a friend name, from right? Miami. Yeah, yeah, a bang. That was his name. He, he passed in a car accident. And this was... Uh, you know, and talking to him and find out what his name was, I just was intrigued and it mm -hmm. stuck with me and stuck with me. And then when I came to uh, decide the name of the album, that's what I chose, a bang. So. And I was listening to it on my way in today, and it is vibes on top yeah, of vibes. Yeah, it's vibes. It's so, vibes. But I have to ask you, is that you? What you mean? Like, the... The vocalist. No, I didn't do any vocals okay. on the album. No. Well, no, because there's some that are just Walshy Fire and there's, yeah. there's vocals. So I was yeah, like, no. is he all of the a sudden? The only one I actually did like the intro for was one called No Negative Vibes. That's the only one I did an intro for, but the rest of them are not, I don't have any vocals on them. No. Okay. Just producing and putting it, is the, absolutely putting it together. Amazing. And I have to ask you, because the last big project from Major Lazer was Africa. Is Africa the is the future. Yeah, you're right. And that was that the last package project, right? Were you guys aware that this whole Afro yes, fusion thing was about to just take over? Of course. I mean, I've lived it now for the last three, four years. I've mm -hmm. lived it. Kenya, um, South Africa, and, uh, and, and Lagos have been a part of Major Lazer and solo touring for me for the last three, four years. Wow. Um, as a group, we've done Kenya maybe six times. So that's maybe six years worth of going to Kenya yeah. to perform. And then solo... Uh, Rwanda, Uganda, uh, Malawi, like I've done everything you can think of, you know, and so it's not by coincidence, like this is not by coincidence, we saw the wave coming mm -hmm. way before um, uh, uh, Lior Cohen went on, 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 that, on that other radio show and was like, hold my hands, Africa's yeah. gonna be the next wave, like that's when I think a lot of people were like, what? But before that, we were already well aware of it. We were already working with the artists, and so we put that project out. Well, I have to ask you, though, because when you, when you listen to, like, when Davido came out, that was, I feel like that was one of the first ones that went mainstream, That one went right? mainstream, right. That one in Ayo, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ayo, he had the big song. It was on, it was on rotation on every station. Uh, crazy. But those two songs, I can't remember yeah. the song right now, but yeah. And then even going back and listening to Jadena right. and, and a lot of his, right. his beats, you know. right. And if you look back at that Classic Man yeah. album, he was already introducing yeah. that concept, right? But when you listen to that and you compare it to Soka, you compare it to our, our Caribbean vibes, right. I feel like it's one of those things where you have to step back and go, Africa has always, it's Facts. always been Facts. with us. You know what I'm yeah, saying? We've, we've just never said the word yeah. Africa. We've just never said, this is African music. We've said Soka, we've said Reggae, we've said Dancehall. Mm -hmm. But, you know... In the, in the title or in the description, we've never said, you know, influenced by Africa, yeah. which I think now we can, we can um, not avoid saying. We have to say, you know, um, um, uh, um, you know Latin funk, uh, you know, uh, Afro-Cuban music, yeah. you know, all that stuff. You know, it's 100%, you know, African influence. But as a Jamaican, as a Jamaican, and obviously you grew up here in America, so mm -hmm. do you consider yourself Jamaican-American? Yeah, man, 100%. Okay. So Jamaican-American... Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, we talk so much about having your culture stripped from you, especially when we go back <laughs> 150 right. years, right? Right, right, right. But it's almost like, almost that reassurance, like, as much as you can take 
a people's past away, you can't take who they are away. And music Correct. is kind of like the thing that reminds you of that the most. Like, it's always been here. When people were brought to the Caribbean islands, right. they had that with them. And now you're seeing that kind of simpatico as this music is coming out. And you're going, right. wait a minute. Right. So, I, 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 I mean, I got so much examples of that. You know, um, of course, slavery um, should have annihilated everything, right? Mm -hmm. We should have come here as like blank slates. But somehow language and music and food are the things that we fought through slavery and maintained. Yep. And uh, music being the loudest one. And so, you know, when you when you think about how amazing that is, and I look at songs that I discover in Africa that are Caribbeanized, and I had no clue the melody the blah, blah, blah. So I use this particular song. It's called uh, Maria Makeba, and she calls it the wedding song. It's actually a South African song um, with the click sounds. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say it right, but a Kwam song. Um, but in Kwam music, um, you know, they uh, they use a lot of those click sounds. And so if you guys look it up, Mc Maria Makeba, uh, the song is called The Wedding Song. And then now in Jamaica over the decades, we've repeated that song over and over and over again in dance hall and in reggae. And we don't even, I don't even think we know mm -hmm. why, you know? And so I was able to draw the timeline of the South African song that's a couple of centuries old and then bring it forward to current dance hall songs that use the exact same melody. That's crazy. And, you know, and I've, I, it's pretty interesting because that's not the only one. You know, it usually starts with uh, gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, so it goes from African music to gospel music and then to street music mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, it's a great journey. And I, I, I did the album to tell, to speak on that journey. Well, the album, like I said, is absolutely phenomenal. And if Appreciate you haven't it. checked it out, a bang, you can definitely stream it. All that's great. A-B-E-N-G, a, -B -E -N -G, yes. a bang, A-B-E-N-G. Great merch to go with it. Yeah. Um, but that's one thing that I will always give Major Lazer credit for. I feel like you're always at the forefront of whatever is coming next. Like this Caribbean, th not the Caribbean, but the, I would say the Latin vibe right. that took over the past couple of years. Right. You guys have been working yeah, with the J up. Balvins and with the Anitas and with, straight you know, up. Spending time in, in South America and Brazil and in Argentina and in Chile and all of these places. So it's like, I mean, if you want to know what's coming next in music, just follow yeah. Oshie and West. So and here's the thing is it gets really difficult now because there was a, so here's a, here's just being honest and true, truthful. Major Lazer's, uh, I've been with Major Lazer about seven, eight years now, mm -hmm. right? Major Lazer's about 10, 11 years old. And what we were doing was there's this ground level of music and then there's popular music and then there's this huge gap, this mm -hmm. huge divide. And as technology has come along, that gap has become shorter and shorter and shorter. So now way more people know about these underground yeah. sounds or these old cultural sounds and traditional sounds quicker, um, louder than ever before. So us being the people who've always been at the forefront mm -hmm. of bringing you stuff, um, we now see lots of other people doing <laughs> what we used to do. Yep. And so the it's become a more crowded space. Mm -hmm. um, we still, I think, are acknowledged as the group that has brought um, the sounds of Caribbean and sounds of South America to the popular world. For sure. No question. But there's tons of other groups doing it now. And so that leaves us going, well, where do we go next? Uh, and then you look at a continent like Africa and you're like, yo, 54 <laughs> countries. Yo, there's, there's something here. There's tons there's of something stuff here. here. Um, as well as we look, we're not looking towards Haiti. Um, so. Big up to Haiti, all my Haitians out there. I love uh, Kompanzuk. I'm so into it right now. I just was listening to a song uh, earlier today, man. I feel like why not, why, not tell, why not tell you what song this was? Like this is how I'm into it, man. I actually have a circle of friends now that every time – a compa song comes up, they're like, yo, you need to listen to this. So I have a, like a group chat. Like yeah, a group man, chat. like a group chat. <laughs> like they stay putting me on the stuff. And it usually is older stuff. But man, when I tell you I love it so much, hold on. Uh -oh. Why do I feel like we're going to hear a sample? Okay, yeah, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. You know that's going to get sampled. <laughs> 
you know that's I'm gonna, gonna get sample. Coming. That's Start such a good. The rights cleared you now. guys out there listening know you felt that. You know you felt that. That was good, and that's all you needed to hear. So for me, it's like I'm I'm into I'm into um, music that I think is is up next, and I think Haiti. So just as much as like we've looked at that African wave mm -hmm. now, and I always get that question of what's next. I do believe the French Caribbean is gonna be the next wave. No wonder you love New Orleans so much. Though. I love New Orleans. <laughs> Have you ever been to like Lafayette or ba uh, yeah, not past Baton Rouge, at Lafayette, where they still speak French? Insane. Well, insane. The signs are still in French yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Insane. Well, and even like the, what are they, the parish, like how, even yeah. how, what they're called. Yeah. yeah. No, Louisiana has definitely maintained its roots yeah. really well. It's a unique so, place. Love it. You mentioned what's next. We're talking about this French Caribbean influence. Mm -hmm. You do have a new song yeah, man. that is coming out. Yeah. So the song is called Que Calor. And I didn't, calor. I didn't know you guys weren't. You guys, we didn't even give you that information. Uh, no, we've kept it. We've kept stout. it so secretive stout. that we didn't even give you the name of the song. Que calor. Yeah, which is crazy. Actually, I can show you off here. I can show you guys the music video for it. With the videos already done, and we didn't even know the damn name of the song. That's how, how that we, but that's how it works now. Is you don't drop a song, Until you, you drop no, the music yep, video. The video's gotta yeah. be done. So you know, back in back in back in, I'll say my day, Kimmy B. You're very <laughs> young. Um, but yeah, you would you would you would drop the song and then you'd promote the song and then yeah. you would drop the video months after. Yeah. That's how it always was, right? And you drop it on MTV. Yeah, you drop it on MTV, uh, BET, and you know it would be already. You could almost say that maybe a video would not have been made if the song didn't gain traction. For sure, because right. that was more money to go into right. marketing. And so whatever. you would drop the song on radio, see how it does, and if it was a a hit or on its way, you drop a video. Now you drop, you make the video before you make the song. <laughs> so That's crazy. how you do it now. So, you know, no one drops a video, no one drops a song and then doesn't have a video same day or yeah. very shortly after. And so, yeah, of course, our video was shot already. But I can show you guys this video off air. It's pretty cool. Does that mean that we can actually hear the song too? You can hear the song. Right, yeah. I just well, realized that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell Lieberman, man, go, yo, go to H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> I can't stand him. <laughs> He's the best, though. Big up Lieberman. I can't stand him. He's so annoying. Now, first of all, we've already established that this is now your home when you're at home. In I, I am full time, yeah. So like I said, um, if you ever want to come through, do a show, yeah, I'm sure we can I'm make really, that happen. Can we talk again when um, I'm, I'm, I'm well, like maybe right when the song drops, we can do a review of the song. Can we have people come in? And we can come in oh, and have a live audience, and that would be so dope. I did not know that you guys had such a great setup, so I would love to use it. Yeah, I would love to fully. That's how we do yeah, oh, the professionalism at it hits 97.3 is amazing. Yeah. I now, love it. The, so there's two questions I need to ask you if we're going to do that. If you're coming in, then we need to have patties. Who's got the best patties in South Florida? Whoa, I would no not. No pressure. I would not even do this. Um, I'm going to say Give Hammond's, me a Hammond's Flaky Bake <laughs> in uh, in in Miami Gardens, Carroll okay. City. Um, Whoa. I also, <laughs> yo, this is crazy pressure right now. Um, whoa, because you know you don't want to offend. The comment section could get lit right now. Because um, I think it's the same with like croquetas and yes. stuff like that. Like people For are very sure. like, yo, or which like ones are good? Like yeah. Got the best? yeah. Um, so yeah, Hammond's Flicky Bake in uh, Miami Gardens. You, I'm going to start, I'm sorry to everyone out there in Fort Lauderdale. I, I don't, I don't really ever go to Fort Lauderdale. <gasps> so for me, you know, as a 305 person, I'm probably going to only name 305 Got places, you. right? Um, but, you know, I know. You the, can have deliveries coming to yeah, your man, house. Yeah, I know. From yo, patty yeah, yeah, let's do a taste in Fort test. Lauderdale. Oh, you know, let's do a taste test, there man. You have that's it. what we should do. We should have anybody that's down. We'll have a patty war right here on stage. Everybody and studio. We can all test. Everybody get like a secret ballot. And we can tell the world from Hits 97.3. Who in South Florida has the best patty? But if they're down to be a part of the patty work, you know, some people be like, nah, I got the best patty already. And then they don't, don't want to really this. test it, though. Right. They don't want to let the but, people speak. But for the people that are out here that, that that's not afraid, <laughs> hit Kimmy B up. <laughs> the challenge. Everybody out there, if you got a favorite spot that has uh, Jamaican patties, hit Kimmy B up. Yes. Let us get a log, and then we can contact them and be like, listen, the people said that you need to be in this thing. And then let's do it right here. And we'll get the new song. We'll Take do the get song, yeah. We'll do that. We'll yeah. watch the video. We'll eat patties, and then we will officially crown Facts. the patty champ. Yo, I would love to be a part of that, man. That'd be so dope. That's that would be what we're amazing. Gonna do. I yeah. love it. And then the second thing, if while she's coming to my house for a party, what kind of rum do I have to have in the building? Shout out to Bacardi. 
Oh, okay. Who has, on the back of the hat. Who has sponsored. So okay, yes. So we're definitely going to have Bacardi's a given. <laughs> Bacardi's got a wide array of rum. Who has sponsored rum and bass for the last three years. I would never say another name because Bacardi, gotcha. you guys have come through. You've been such a big supporter of uh, part of my journey. Also, you've supported Miami in For major sure. ways um, as a home team rum and as a rum that has actually put cash down cash investment into what major laser the vision for major laser and for walshy fire solo i gotta shout you out and i don't just uh want to say that on the sponsorship side the rum is excellent yes, it is. they've got tons of crazy stuff coming out too um major laser we've actually made a rum with bacardi no, you didn't. yes we have go google it google it right now it's major <laughs> laser rum i'm not playing it's still on sale it's uh Gillinaire went out to the uh to Puerto Rico to the oh. rum factory and actually made the rum himself. And that's a fact. We've got video this is documentary. Handmade rum. Handmade by Gillinaire um in Puerto Rico. Something tells me that may be borderline overproof. No, because <laughs> believe it or not, there it is. There it there is. It is. Yeah, man. Because believe it or not, Gillinaire is a god of rum. Gillinaire is a connoisseur of rum. Gotcha. He's he's and that's why we sent him. You know, I don't know if you guys know, man, you know, shout out to Gillinaire. He's actually not a part of Major Laser anymore. Love him. He's such an intelligent guy. But you know, he is um one of the most eclectic people you'll ever meet. I get that. Vibe. Fashion, food, um, music. Gotcha. Just intelligence beyond his years so you know when it comes to like anything in rum and food he's the guy you want to call because he's always going to have the right answer always always gotcha. always so we've got our patty war going down when we <laughs> premiere the que calor, que calor. Song and, and i can video. also tell him yo it's featuring jay balvin yeah man did you guys really not know this no J Balvin. Zero info. This is like stealth. This is like the the, the new this thing. is crazy you know what I mean? then like, okay there were codes on this what else should i say I should say Colombia and not Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. Yeah, you should know that Columbia. much. Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. Um, and I should also tell you, yeah, so the song also features El Alfa. Okay. From the DR. Did you shoot, where'd you shoot the video? Okay, I'm not in the video um, because I had a I had to do my Paris show. When you watch the video, I'm the only one not in the video, man. It's crazy. But uh, in New York. Okay, I yeah, didn't know if you guys like took a little trip. No, no, no. Tells me Our last I video with Anita was in Costa Rica. Oh God. And we shot it in, in Le Mans, and that was beautiful. Shout out to Costa Rica. If you guys have ever, like, had a list of places that you need to travel to and Costa Rica's not on it, you messing up. It's a jungle. It's beautiful. The the animal, the wildlife, the flora and fauna, well, see, I, it's unbelievable. Costa Rica, big up. I got your next job, though, for real. Travel. Yeah, I definitely need to be a part of, a, <laughs> part of some kind channel. of global... Uh, um, you know, some government needs to hire me for like, their like visit Florida, for like their marketing. Their, I got you. So like to be honest with you, I actually have a couple travel uh, show ideas that I'm pitching right now. And that's really? no joke. Yeah, I do this too much. I go too many amazing places to not have a cameraman with me. Do you need um, a personal assistant? And shout out to like, always need a personal like, assistant. Like, we, always. Like, and I shout out to those resumes. shout out to people that loved like uh, Anthony Bourdain and Zimmerman. And so what I I'll tell you the concept, right? Um, actually, no, I won't tell you the concept because I don't know how far yeah. this is going to go. And let yeah. me get the pitch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, I'll tell you off air. Snatches it up and I'll tell you off air. I'll tell you off air. I'll tell you off air. Three, like they took my I tell stuff you, from your YouTube you are video. right. You are right. You are right. I've given you guys more than enough. Que Calor featuring J Balvin and El Alpha. Big up El Alpha. Big up to all the Dominicans out there. Uh, Dembo has become like one of our favorite styles of music. It's just so fun. And it's, the words are usually nasty. It's very like, you know, <laughs> but it's very fun, man. It's very fun. And, you know, a lot of spots in Miami play, uh, play Dembo. If good not, to dance to. if not a portion all night because it's so good to dance to. So shout out to all the typicals that we go to and enjoy that kind of music, man. So El Alpha's on the song. Um, I've been following El Alpha for a long time, by the way. So for anyone out there who thinks that we're just new to this, no. From, uh, uh, from Coche Bomba. 2009 when he was doing <laughs> it's like boom da, da, boom da, da. and it's like yo man reggaeton man I'm, I'm i love it old school reggaeton i love it but yeah so that's the song and it comes out september 11th september 11th there you have it yeah. and then you'll be back here in our penthouse studio like i said for our patty war and our big debut and yeah, our man. music video reveal and all of that good stuff and we want everybody to come out 
Um, and then obviously we'll be watching for you on the Travel Channel. Yeah. And you can also catch Walshi at Coyo Taco. Every Tuesday. In and um, also just hit me up on Instagram, man. If you guys enjoyed this, if you have any questions, um, if you need any help in the music industry, man, I'm always down, always down to reply. And I love to network with anybody from South Florida. And of course, people online listening to this worldwide. Shout out to you as well. A bang out now. Make sure you check it out. And then, of course, take a Lord, Major Laser. That's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, Walsh. Thank you so much, Kimmy B. Much love.